Let's talk a little bit about what it means to own shares or stock in a company. So shares or stock. And I think we all have a general sense, but what I want to do in this video is make it a little bit more tangible to really understand exactly what you're buying when you buy a share of stock. So the general sense, and this is exactly what it really is, is when you buy stock or you buy shares, you're you're essentially becoming a partial or a part owner of the company. Part owner of company. And just to contrast this with bonds, because they're often kind of used in the same phrasing, oh, I'm going to go buy some stocks or bonds, or I deal with stocks and bonds. Bonds, bonds, you become part lender to the company. Part lender to the company. So for example, if, if you buy a, well, I'll just say a face value bond of Let's say it's ten dollars. Let's say it's a thousand dollars, and there's a thousand people who do that. Each of you all are lending a thousand dollars to the company, and since there's a thousand of you, you're lending a million dollars to the company. And I'm not going to go into detail on that because the focus of this is going to be stock. But it's good to keep in mind that they're very different things. Here you're owning the company. Here you're lending the company. So just to get make this a little bit more tangible of exactly what we're owning, let me draw a simple balance sheet for some company X. So this is company, let me do a new color. Let's say we're dealing with company, company X right here. And let's say if we looked at company X's assets. And when we talk about assets, it really is the same thing that we mean in the real world or in our everyday life when we talk about assets. They're things that have value, things that are going to give us some type of future benefit. A house is an asset, because it gives us the future benefit of being able to live in it and protecting us from cold weather and rain. Cars are assets, because they give, provide us some transportation. Cash is an asset, because it can be exchanged for things we need in the future. So all of these, a loan Loan to someone else is an asset, because in the future they will pay us back. A loan to me is a liability, which we'll talk about in a second. But anyway, let me, let's just in the very abstract sense, say this is company X's assets. And let's say that they're worth $100 million. $100 million. And I'm not going to go into exactly how this number is determined, or who's determining it, or who's saying this is $100 million. But let's just say this is, we agree that this is how much their land, and their patents, and their copyrights, and their cash, and, and, and their buildings, and everything else they have is worth. All of the things that will generate future value. Now, let's say that Company X has also borrowed some money. And maybe they borrowed it by issuing bonds, which I will not go into detail on. So let's say they borrowed some money. And so they owe some people, collectively, $80 million. $80 million. This could have been with a straight uh, debt from a bank, or this could have been via a bond issue. They might have issued, uh, maybe they issued a million bonds, where each of those are essentially represent a debt of $80. I won't go into that too much, but I think you get the idea what I mean, part lender. But this is debt, $80 million of debt right here. Let's say that's all of their liabilities. There are other liabilities other than debt. But for simplicity, let's say that's their only liability. And that debt tends to be the biggest. Now, what's left for the owners? And a good way to think about that is what would happen if, if this company were sold and the debt paid off? So if the company were sold and these assets really are able to be sold for $100 million, you'd get $100 million, you'd have to pay the debt holders, you'd have to pay off the debt first. So you'd have 100 minus 80, you'd have $20 million left for the owners. I'll do that in this other green color. So you'd have $20 million left. $20 million left. And this is called the equity, or the owner's equity. Owner's, owner's equity. And this is completely the same idea as when people talk about having equity in a house. If I have a $300,000 house, and I still have $200,000 left on the mortgage, then I have $100,000 in equity. So it's completely analogous. And so you can see very simply that assets, and I'll write this down. You're getting a little bit of an introduction to accounting right here. But assets are going to always be equal to liabilities plus equity, because essentially, or you can view it this way, if you subtract liabilities from both sides, assets minus liabilities is equal to equity. This might be a little bit more intuitive. What we have left over is always what we own minus what we owe. That is what the owners have. Now, 
When we say that I'm part owner of a company, that means that I'm, I have a piece of this pie right here. This is what I am a part owner of, the equity. So for example, if we have, if there are 2 million shares, so company X, let's say they have 2 million, 2 million shares. So, and let's say that the equity is really worth $20 million. How much is each share worth if we believe all of these numbers? Well, we have $20 million of equity. 20 million of equity, of equity, divided by 2 million shares, divided by 2 million shares, which gets us $10, $10 of equity, of equity, Per share, so if we believe all of these numbers, then and we and we know that Company X has two million shares, then we would say that each share is worth ten dollars. And if we like these numbers, and if someone is willing to sh sell us a share for less than that, we would buy it. If someone was uh, willing to pay more than that, maybe we would sell it. And just to make all of this a little bit more tangible, let's look at an actual example of a company to show you that I'm not making all of this stuff up. I got this off of your traditional financial sources. This is actually from the filings of this unnamed company. And you'll get extra bonus points if you figure out what this company is. And this is their, their actual stock trading activity. And I just want to draw the same diagram that I drew up here, the same diagram that I drew up here, to really on this company so you can kind of see that this is actually happens in the real world. So first, let's draw their assets. Let's draw this. Let's say this is company X. And let's say this, these are its assets right there. Its assets. Let's go to its balance sheet. This is actually what they reported. This is June thirtieth. So, uh, uh, well, I, I, we, we want to take the more recent date. This is, you know, they're just trying to compare to what they had before. And let's look at these. This is some time ago, but it doesn't matter. We're learning. This is we're not trying to decide whether we want to invest in this right now. This is a very old financial statement. But let's just look at what they're saying. So they have our total assets here: thirty million. I'll just do in round numbers, $30 million right there. So $30 million. You might be curious about, hey, what's all this current asset business? Those are things that are either cash or that can be turned into cash within the next year. So for example, accounts receivable. That's money that other maybe vendors owe them that they're going to pay very soon. Inventories. These are things that they have maybe in the warehouse that they can sell and turn into cash very quickly. Other current assets. Maybe that stock or some other type of investment that they could sell and turn into cash. So they have 18 million of current and current assets. That's things that they can turn into cash very easily and very quickly, definitely within the next year. And then you have some property, plant, and equipment. This is kind of that land and buildings and 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 machinery that I talked about. And then who knows what these other assets are? Maybe those are trademarks or patents or or who knows what they are. But all in all, they have 30 million dollars of assets. Now let's go to the liabilities. So they have some they have some current liabilities, 16 million. Current liabilities, just so you know, those are liabilities. These are things that they have to pay in cash within the next year. It could be debt. It could be payables. They have to pay some other vendors. Who knows what it is? But you can kind of view it as debt on some level, maybe debt that you have to pay in the next year. And then they have a long-term debt of $5.5 million. If you add these two up, you get pretty close to about 20, 22 million. So just for simplicity, I'll put it over here as 22 million. So this company has 22 million in liabilities, 22 million liabilities. These are their assets, just to get all the labeling right. So what's left for equity? We'll just draw on this simple diagram. We have 8 million left for equity. 8 million left for equity. And actually, they did the calculation here for us. The exact number is 8.39 or 8.4 million in equity, but this is a nice round number for us to show it. So this is real world stuff that we're dealing with. And if you wanted to know kind of if you believe these numbers, if you believe that this company's assets really are worth thirty million dollars, what should you pay for it? Well then you're gonna divide by the total number of shares. And you'll see this in some financial statements. And I won't go into the details of the difference between basic and diluted, but the numbers are very, very close, so we don't have to do uh, worry about it too much. But let's just say that this company has 2.7 looks like 2.78 million shares. So if the book value is 8.396, I mean I wrote 8 here. 
how much should each of these shares? Uh, how much should each of these? And when I say book value, I mean this is a, these are their books. According to their books, the equity is worth 8.4 million. So if we if we really believe that the equity is worth 8.4 million, how much should each share worth be worth? Well, we'll just divide 8.4 million. We'll just have to divide 8.4 million. 8.4 million. This is actually an 8.4. I wrote 8 there for simplicity. Divided by the number of shares, 2. 7, 8 million. So that's a million, and that's a million. And I'll get a calculator out for this one right here. So let's see, we are doing 8.4 million divided by 2.78 million shares. So according, if we believe these numbers, if we believe the books, the book value of the shares is about three, $3.02 per share. So this is. Three dollars, three dollars and two cents per share, book value per share. That's what we should be willing to pay for this, or what we think a fair price per share of this company is, if we think these assets are really worth thirty million dollars. Now, what are people actually paying for these shares? Well, that's we got. We look at these this this information right here, and we see that the last trade here was for $2.58. So people are paying a discount to the number we just calculated. So the only reason why people are paying less than that, or someone's willing to sell for less than $3, is that someone out there, especially the person selling, thinks that this company really, the assets of this company really aren't worth $30 million. He or she thinks that the assets of this company are worth less than $30 million. And maybe they think that the company's prospects aren't as good, their, their Product isn't the the sales are going to go down. Who knows? Maybe the person buying it, maybe they think it is worth three dollars a share, and that's why they're willing to pay two dollars fifty eight for it because they think it's going to go up. And just so that we get you know some of the other uh, details that we see here, this bid, this bid right here, this is what uh, someone has explicitly said that they're will willing to pay for a share. The ask is what someone has explicitly said they're willing to sell a share for. This 52-week range is the range of prices that the shares have sold. So, so, so in the past year, these shares sold for at least as low as a dollar twenty, and that was actually a great deal because then they went up. Uh, well, you know, even now, or they're selling at two dollars fifty-eight. The average volume right here. This is this is the number of shares sold per day, exchanged per day. The market cap right here. You've probably heard that word before. That's essentially the market's sense of what this number. Really is. We're saying that the books of this company are saying this company is worth eight million dollars, but the market cap is saying what the equity of the company is worth in the market's mind. And to get that number, they're taking the two dollars and fifty-eight. They're taking the two dollars and fifty-eight times the number of shares times the two point seven eight million shares. And if we do that, we're going to get let's see two point five eight times. 2.78 is equal to exactly, well, it's a little different than what they had. Maybe it's a little round off ever, but roughly 7 million in market cap. So, like I said before, the market is not paying $3, it's paying $2.58. And so the market is saying that the equity, this piece right here, is closer to 7 million, even though the books are saying that this number right here is above 8 million. Well, anyway, hopefully that was a little bit uh, useful and, and gives you a little bit of a sense of, of what actually what it actually means to buy shares in a company.